Alrighty, now we got the Hooker 100. Look at them lips right there, boy. <clears throat> I think they called it that because they were hoping it was going to be putting out good, but uh, y'all didn't hear me say that. But anyway, um, whew, this bad boy right here, like I said before, I had to take this board out. Uh, cleaned the living heck out of it. You can take a look at that, man. That thing is good and shiny now, boy. And uh, I know you didn't ask me to clean it, but I just felt the need to. That's what I've done. <laughs> had to draw a schematic on that bad boy. Let's see if I can find that where I drew that schematic at. Actually, it's right here. There it is. It was over here. So yeah, I had to draw a schematic so I can see exactly how those two relays were working. So uh, another thing I had to do is make sure these thing, uh, these uh, studs were grounded. This was not grounded on this side, and this one wasn't either. They were both soldered, it appeared, but they were not. They were both cold solder joints. I don't think they were hot enough, uh, whoever soldered them down there. Had to do a little bit of work on the actual input padding of this amp. I had to change the whole input padding around because uh, you were swinging backwards on the low and the high. <laughs> So I went ahead and did a little bit of uh, changing around with that. I could tell the, the, the tin on that was right here was very, very dark. <clears throat> and uh, another thing, the reason why this amplifier was not working, you would never believe it. I even uh, rewrapped the input transformer with some Teflon here, 22 gauge. That's what was in there. And uh, it still wouldn't make in watts. The, the transistors was fine. I checked them. And come to find out what it was, which is really weird. I even put some new 10 ohms in here too, just to be safe. Um, the right side of the input transformer was not soldered to the pad. It, it, it was the craziest thing. I think what happened is somebody's been in here and they were doing some soldering for some reason around that area. And they pretty much sucked the solder away from that input trans, uh, transformer on the right side, which is down up under here. And that's why it wasn't making watts. And I could not figure it out to save my life until I just looked down and finally saw that. And uh, so there you go. Dropped uh, two uh, feedback circuits in here. They didn't add feedback circuits back then for some reason. So I made sure to add that with all these amps here. Uh, which gives you a little extra safety there. So uh, I think that's pretty much about it. And went ahead and did the conversion, like I said, from taking all the caps out, making sure everything's one big ground plane. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can tell where I've done that here, over there, right down in there, and right over here. There were basically where all the screws were. Okay. All right. Four watt radio. We're in PP mode, which is up, which is low. As you see, no dead key at all. Oh, yeah. That's right there, about 50 watts RMS. We'll go over to high. Oh, yeah. Right there, about 80 watts RMS. All right, we'll go ahead and flip it on PP. We'll just do it on high. Here's your peak. Oh, almost as much as that other amp. About 180, maybe 190. 180, 190, and look at here. Hooker, 100. So I think she's doing what she's supposed to do. About 80 watts more. Two 455s. You could probably get a little bit more out of these 455s if you did a more modern day build with them. But other than that, man, she's working good. Got a banging preamp in there, too. All right, man. Off to the last one. All righty. Here you have the, uh, the 100 by linear. All right. Let me explain something about this amp, which I do know because I have owned this exact amp before. And I got rid of it eh, not too, too long ago. Maybe a half a year ago. This amplifier does not do a lot of watts like the other two is going to do. 
The reason why is my personal belief. This amplifier was designed to be as wide banded as it possibly could be. As you see those coils on the output, that's a, to be honest, that's a real cheap attempt to make this amp work as good as it possibly can on the whole HF spectrum. So this amp is more designed to, is to make as much watts as it can on multiple bands. Um, if, if, if you kind of get what I'm saying there. So it's not really designed just for 10 meters like the other ones are. Okay. So that's why this one is not going to do as much power as the other ones did. does. If you would like it to do a little bit more power, one of the best things to do with this thing is to rip this whole thing out of here and throw a copper board in here and do a new build. <laughs> but uh, it's it's definitely unique. A Class C amp designed to work. But so you got to understand, back in these days, they used AM a lot and FM a lot on the ham bands. So, you know, there's a lot of places people did talk AM back then on the ham bands and of course, you know, they were Class C, were working off uh, FM. So, uh, that's why you see there, it's, it's for FM AM on the top there, and SSB down there on the bottom. So, but it's a Class C amp. All of these are Class C amps. So I had a little 680 there, which did help out a little, but not much. There was no output. There was no uh, leak, uh, leakage uh, capacitor on the output transformer, period. But I went ahead and added that. It, it made a little bit more, maybe 30 more watts PEP, but not much. But it is what it is, man. It's just the type of amp it is. Mine that I had, I could, I, I was lucky to get 100 watts PEP out of it. All right. 4 watts RMS, same as the other ones. I think we got on RMS now down here, which I might be low. Sometimes they'll switch them on you. Oh, yeah, I think that's low. Oh, yeah. that's like 20 or 30 bird. Flip it up. Oh, yeah. almost 50. Almost 50 R uh, RMS. Let's go over to PEP. Oh, yeah. see, it's 150 watts. Now, look, when I got this thing. It was not even doing about 75, 80 watts at the most. I could not get it to touch at 100. And I think that's one of the uh, problems this amp said it had, too. Let me find it. Keys up, low watts, low swing. Radio receive drops out. Yep. See? That's what's up with, it, with that preamp. So there you go, man. Good low dead key, though. See? Oh, right there, about 150 watts. And like I said, with some of these other ones, uh, if you if you get any issues with these relays chattering, flip them down on SSB. All that SSB does is just add a little bit of delay. A little bit of delay. See, I was keying it up on the SSB portion then. We'll flip it up to AM. See, all it is is Hear that? Click, unclick, click, unclick. So I'm going to flip it down. Click, unclick. See, there's just a little bit of delay, but not much. There's AM. Oh, see, no difference in wattage. It's just, it's just uh, adding a little delay capacitor to these relays here. Four single pole, single throw relays. What y'all think about that out there, y'all? <laughs> All right, man. Well, there you go. Glad I could get these uh, three uh, ancient pieces of art working for you. Next, we got the uh, X-Force, which is done. So that'll be the next video. All right, bud. We'll be back. Oh, gatekeep right here around the northeast end of Georgia. God bless. 73rds.